Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for checking out my channel. As you can see, we're back here in the studio today to do my two-year ownership review of my 2018 TRD Pro Tacoma. Now in this video, I was gonna go over my cost of ownership, what it's cost me to own this truck over the last 55,000 miles, the great things about this truck, the good things about this truck, and the not so good, the bad. I'm Shane Walls, and thank you so much for checking out my channel. And I make my living as a fine art nature photographer that specializes in capturing the beauty of our national parks. I started my career as a photographer for Motor Trend Magazine, and still to this day work with clients as kind of a side hustle on reviewing and photographing trucks and cars. It was on one of these photo shoots atop a snowy mountain peak where I was introduced to the Toyota Tacoma TRD Pro. I was so impressed with this truck that I immediately went out and purchased my own to serve as our new exploration vehicle. The truck instantly became an important part of our photographic travels, acting as much more than just our everyday vehicle or our transportation. Jumping right into cost of ownership, every cent I've spent on this truck maintenance wise is in this little booklet and at 55,000 miles, I'm just under $1,000 overall for this truck. Now just to note, that's a little bit more above and beyond the regular maintenance of this truck. I've had this thing realigned twice and also too, the shocks have been taken apart and cleaned and put back together. Now those other parts of maintenance, it didn't need to be done, the two alignments and cleaning the Fox shocks. I kind of chose to do them because we drive so much with this truck, I want to keep it in its best shape it can be. So going consistently from on-road to off-road, I kind of like to realign it every once in a while, probably every 25,000 miles just to be safe. And the shock cleaning, that was, we were just, it was full mud and the poor shocks were just gunked. I washed them the best I could, but I still had a little squeak. So I just had the Toyota guys take them apart, clean them, and it was back, back to brand new. And one of the great things about Tacomas and Toyota in general is just their flat out reliability. It's got our 55,000 mile checkup. And as you can see, we are all in the green except for one yellow. This is the first yellow I have ever received from an inspection. So it was for a pollen, a pollen filter. So that's probably about $60. So on the next, next time we're in, we'll have that replaced. But it was kind of a fun, the first yellow check mark we've ever gotten on this truck and it's at 55,000 miles. But on that note of reliability, I am a little disappointed in Toyota. A couple months ago, I did get this letter from them about another recall on this Tacoma. This will be the second one. This seems to be a little bit more serious. The first one was just a sensor. If it gets dirty or something like that, it doesn't quite sense and beep that, you know, when a car comes too close or you get too close to the back of another car. That wasn't too big of a deal. That was the first recall. The second one though is for the fuel pump. And they say it could go anytime. You can avoid it though by not running it all the way to empty and then filling it up, which I hardly do in this truck. So hopefully I'm okay. Again, I got this letter a couple months ago. They still don't have a fix for it. It will be free, obviously. Kind of in the back of my head thinking about if I'm, you know, eight, 900 miles away from home, driving home and all of a sudden the fuel pump just goes, that's kind of a bad dig. It is what it is. Hopefully they can fix it soon, but it is, the, it is a problem. I'm not so happy about it. It is the only, the second one, the first one was a quick fix, but it is another recall. Now onto the engine, and I know so many people do not like this engine transmission setup. There, I see a lot of complaints in the forums, a lot of people reviewing this truck, complain about it. Me personally, it doesn't bother me all that often. After 55,000 miles of driving it, yes, it does shift a little too often sometimes. At altitude, if you're kind of going up a hill, yeah, it might shift down a little bit too often, but it's really, not that big of a deal. I mean, if you saw my MPG test video, the way this is getting through the gears, it's saving so much gas mileage and you don't, it only becomes a bother every once in a while. Again, I probably feel it really trying to give it the beans to get on the freeway. Yeah, you might get a weird little shift. It might skip one and it's kind of a little bump, but it's really not that big a deal. And all the other cars and trucks I test, I see it in a lot of those as well. So I don't really quite understand the big hubbub over this engine. Again, over the last 50,000 miles I've driven it, it truly doesn't bother me all that often. I just wanna take a quick second to note these tires, these Goodyear Wranglers with Kevlar protection. 
look at this tread. This is 55,000 miles old, and it still looks really, really good. I mean, it's given, it's been marked green on the inspection sheet, but that's very impressive for a tire lasting that long and still looking this good. And as well with the Kevlar siding and extra protection, I haven't had one flat. The full-size spare in the back of this truck has never been used. I've had no issues with these tires at all. And just if I get a lot of questions on this, MPG-wise for this truck, I do fill up kind of closer to 37, 38 for highway driving. It's rated for 30, but as you can see, I'm still getting really good wear on them. It hasn't been dangerous in any way. I get pretty good MPG and the tires holding up great. And then when we air down for off-roading, again, no punctures, no issues with these tires at all at 55,000 miles. On to the bed of this truck. Now I get a lot of questions about how well it's holding up. You know, this polymer plastic they use back here, they don't actually use metal. And honestly, I can't really give you a good answer because the bed of the truck, in my case, is usually literally my bed. Because when I'm on a location, usually we're hours and hours away from hotels or even sometimes campsites. So I'll just sleep back here. And even if I need to on long drives, just kind of pull over, have this all set up. I can just go to bed there and get my rest. So not too much stuff has been thrown in and out of here. It's mostly just been camera and camping gear. And as you can see, I just put down some fake grass. It's easier on the knees and a little bit softer for when I sleep on it. I put mats on top of it too. Now this is a five foot bed and I'm 5'10". Sleep diagonally, it's over six foot. So I can sleep very comfortably that way. Since we are back here, I do get a lot of questions about this topper and it is a snug top rebel. The issues I have had with it though, it does leak. It does have a small leak here and there. And it is kind of interesting when it's colder out and rains, it's no problem. But when I do get leaks in that, it's when it's really hot and I get those crazy desert thunderstorms. I'm not sure if it's just expanding and contracting, but I do know Toyota, especially Tacomas, are famous for not really having a good seal because the way Toyota has kind of the ridges along the top here of the bed, can't get that snug, snug compression, I guess, to make it watertight. And it really isn't too bad. Like here's a picture. It's just a small leak up in one corner. And I, it, it's only on really hot, hot days when it rains, I get that leak. So I've never, nothing's been damaged in here. It's just that small leak. It's been no problem. But if someone is out there, I've had this reconnected or whatever the word, the term is, reformed, refitted a few times and still has that leak right up there. So if if you're watching this and you know how to fix that, how I can do it and not take it in again, please comment down below because I'd love to know how I could fix that, if it is possible. Now, one other little issue this truck has, and Tacomas are kind of known for it, is that squeaky suspension. And if you've seen my other videos, I commented on almost all of them. But after driving and testing other trucks in this class, they all seem to have it. So really, I just have to really get over it and live with it. Now I have noticed after driving this truck for two years, the headlights are a little bit dimmer than the competition. And I do really wish it had the new LED headlights such as the 2020 has now, the new Tacoma, to kind of get past that dimness, especially when you're off road and you can turn on the rigid, the fog lights down here, and they are great. Now, as you can see, the interior is held up very well. I'm actually very impressed. When I first got this truck, I thought it had a little too much plastic for my liking, but it's held up great. I have no issues with it now. And even those part of the interior that I touch a lot, these knobs, the shifter, the emergency brake, it's all held up great. There's no real problem. The only little wear and tear I am seeing is on the actual driver's seat, but it's pretty minimal. And that's a lot to be said for this truck because wet dogs have been in here, dirt, mud, this has been, this interior has been put through the test and it's holding up great. My biggest complaint with this interior and its plastic is actually on the rear doors by the automatic window button. This little shelf here is made of plastic and after about a year or so driving this truck, both sides came a little loose and now every once in a while they rattle and vibrate, it kind of creates a little bit of an annoying sound and it's always one of those things you got to stop, pull over, reach back and push down to stop the rattling and that, and that just shouldn't happen. Now as you can see here, this is the old entertainment system since the 2018. I prefer this over the newer 2020. The 2020 actually has silver buttons here, which I really don't like. And as you can see from this video when we were testing another Tacoma, it lags a little bit more. And I don't like that. This one's a lot quicker when you go through the screens, the touch screen, the touch buttons. 
same note, since these aren't actual buttons, it's the actual screen. The ones I do press a lot, when everything's off, you can see it's a little scratch for me pressing the audio, the home, or the apps buttons. Other than that, I don't have much more to say about the interior. I wish it did have a few more USB plugs. This is the 2018, once again, so it only has the one here, which I use constantly. And as for the ECT power button, it's supposed to give you a little extra power when you need it. I've played with it, towing and not, and I really don't notice the difference. It's engaged and when it's not engaged. I'm very comfortable in this interior. Do you like the seating position of this? Not having electric seats has not bothered me one bit. These manual seats, I've set them once and I've never had to go back to it. So that hasn't bothered me at all. And really, there's not too much more to this. The only little thing I guess I would say Using the volume, every once in a while I'll hit the bottom screen, whichever is on my home page, and it takes me to that actual screen. Like I've mentioned in my other videos, the train management is great. I don't use it as much as I used to now that I'm more experienced off-roading. It's still nice that if someone needs to, either one of my camera assistants, my girlfriend, whoever else is driving this truck, it's really nice for them to be able to set the controls, set the train management, and the truck will actually drive itself. So that's still very helpful and we still do use it a lot when someone else is driving the truck. Now I've owned some great vehicles in my life. I've driven some amazing cars as well. But unlike those, this is the first vehicle I've really bonded with. This is the first, this is my first truck, but it's also one of the first vehicles that I always kind of want to keep clean. I feel kind of bad if it's a little dirty and Yes, it might shift a little too much every once in a while. Yes, it's probably not top of its class in every category. But still, that's what kind of gives it its charm. It almost makes it a little bit, I guess for lack of a better word, it almost makes it a little bit human. Now, I've had a lot of great adventures in this truck. It's been so much fun driving it. It gets you there. I've never had any issues with it. And I kind of got almost that sixth sense or that feeling when I look at this truck that it doesn't want to leave me stranded. Like, it'll do everything it can to get me back home safe. It's become more than a truck to me. It's become a friend. Thank you so much for watching. Cheers. Was that a little too much? Yeah, yeah. <laughs>